Hey guys, Sean Media just wanted to big shout out to Rugby League Coffee Mountain. All the best for you. Thank you. Alright, boys, we're going to Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I am Nick from Australia. Welcome to the Saturday Football Review for Round 1 of the 2023 NRL season. We saw three games of football today. We saw the Manly Seagulls beat the Bulldogs at Brookvale Oval, 31 points to 6. We saw my boys, the mighty North Queensland Cowboys, get a very, very tough one point went over the Canberra Raiders up there in Townsville. 19 points to 18. And we just saw the South Sydney Rabbitohs defeat the Cronulla Sutherland Sharks at Shark Park. 27 points to 18. I am joined by rugby league YouTuber Pro Enzo Vids for the Saturday Football Review for the season and for tonight as well. He was at the uh, Manly Bulldogs game. The vlog's up, I believe. Haven't had a chance to check it out yet, but I will be doing that. As soon as we end the review here tonight, Pro Enzo, thanks for coming on the review, my, my friend. And how the hell was Brookie, bro? Yeah, look, today was mad, honestly. It was, uh, and first of all, um, great to be here as well. But um, uh, yeah, it was a great day. Just, uh, I guess, being there and seeing the win uh, was even better. So, you know, it was obviously a nice result. But as for the rest of Super Saturday, I think it was actually a good day, you know? Oh, yeah, it was a bloody um, great day of footy. Um, mainly, obviously, we'll get into that in just a moment. We're, we're, we're going to review that game first. But before we get into all of the uh, Super Saturday games to review, if you guys are new to the YouTube channel, make sure you um, like and subscribe to the channel. Um, it would it would be greatly appreciated if you're new. Make sure you like and subscribe. Comment your thoughts um, in the live chat or in the comment section below, depending on how you're watching this uh, live stream slash video. Um, let me know your thoughts on the games from today. Um, Super Saturday was fantastic. It was very good. Uh, the first game was a bit disappointing, but the other two were quite good. And, um, oh, mate, it's just – it's great to have the footy back. You know, Super Saturday, rugby league in general, it's, it's just great to have it all back. Um, Provenzo, what would you make of Super Saturday? Yeah, look, I, I agree. It's, just, it's good to have that feeling of um, Super Saturday back, I think. It's one of my most favourite footy days of um, the weekend, I think, just about. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a great feeling when it's back. I love it. Absolutely love it. All right. Um, hello to the live chat. We've got a bit of a crowd building up here now. We've got um, Cody Games PlayStation. We've got CJ Moxley, Zen Pies here, Jason Reader, Jaden Lambert, Rishi, uh, Cody Games PlayStation, South Sydney Rabbitohs fan. Um, we got live chat there starting to build up, looking good. Um, all right, what we're going to do, we're going to go back to the very first game for Super Saturday. Pro Enzo Vids, your boys, the Manly Warringah Seagulls over the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. Manly 31, the Bulldogs 6. Um, we may have a bit of a different view on the way the game went here because obviously I watched it on TV. You watched it live from the ground. Um, what'd you make of Manly? Obviously, Cherry Evans was the ultimate standout today, but what'd you make of Manly and, and, and the performance? Well, as a supporter, I'm pretty impressed with what I saw today. I think um, we've changed a lot in the way we, we, like we play. I think our defence was something that I noticed really improved. I think our defence, the way we like hit hard and tackled, was um, something that I'm pretty happy about to see how we've changed with like our defence. Um, yeah. Uh, definitely a few standout players for sure. Like I thought, guys like Croker, Bullimore off the bench, and Garrick, and um, you know e even Paseka, they were all really good today for us. And um, but you know obviously DC and Tom were the main ones, but the whole team played really well. So I think it was a, I think it's fair to say the whole team deserves a massive rap um, today. Yeah, hundred percent. I think they all played well in their own right. For me, um, there were a lot of. A lot of really good players for Manly today. Like you said, a couple of the ones that stood out. Obviously, Turbo, um, Paseca, 
um, Josh Alloway, Ethan Bullimore. There's one player that I'm going to give a big rap to. I've been critical of him for a while now. I think today was the best game he's played in probably 12 months. Shout out to Brad Parker. He yep. was outstanding defensively. He was um, he was amazing all afternoon. Uh, Brad Parker, I thought he played really really well. I'm not sure what you what your thoughts are on Brad Parker, Lorenzo, but I thought he was outstanding. Yeah, I agree. I mean, obviously, I got little concerns about him as well, but I think his defense can have never be faulted. So I think it was yep. good to see him just um, shut Avrilo down that um, right hand side. You know, I think. Um, he, he ran right over um, a really all day, so he had no chance to do much. Yeah, I thought Manly played well as a whole team. I thought they com- they all com- com- complemented each other really well. Uh, like you said, even Bullimore off the bench was very good. Sean Kebby off the bench as well. Really good impact off the bench. 140-odd mm. metres for Kebby off the bench. I did not mind that call before kickoff making the switch. I didn't mind that. Yeah, um, Alloy had to lock and Kebby to the bench. I think that's just good impact, yeah. Yes, 100%. Um, Cooper John's at 5'8". I mean, he did, didn't do anything spectacular, but he, he did the job, didn't he? Yeah, I think that's all he's really there for, to be a good feeling. And, um, you know, I think he, him and Tulangi on that edge did pretty good today defensively and in attack. So, yeah, he played well. Yeah, he did some good things. Um, Lachlan Croker had a good hit out. Uh, Garrick was very good. Tupelotu probably a bit quiet for my liking. Yeah, but. Yeah. It would get better. Obviously, the ball didn't go his way a whole lot. Um, Ola Kawatu was absolutely scary. Um, now, the Bulldogs. Um, a lot of people have been bashing the Bulldogs after this performance. And, look, it wasn't a great performance from Canterbury. But I, I don't think they were as bad as the scoreline suggests. 31-6, the final score. The Bulldogs obviously were not great and they probably deserve some criticism, but some of the criticism, you know, oh, drop Flanagan, oh, Perham's not a fullback. Um, Alamoni and Avarillo are horrible, blah, blah, blah. Um, Famuna Brown's got to go, all these online fucking rubbish. You got to remember with the Bulldogs as well, it's, it's basically a brand new team, lots of new combinations. Things are still got to gel. Um, the difference was, I think, mainly had Cherry Evans, Tommy Turbo, and they all complemented each other well because they've all been together for a couple of years now. The Bulldogs still need to work out a few things. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a fair point. I think um, that, that's why I actually put dogs outside my eight because I think that they won't – uh, all gel straight away. It's going to take a couple of months them to really show what they've, yeah. what they've really got as a, as a team. But um, yeah, look, they weren't that bad, I thought. But towards the end, they clocked off a bit. I think what the problem was, the Bulldogs, they were their, they were their own worst enemy for a long time in this game. I, I think they had about eight errors in the first half, which is almost, um, un, you know, it's very hard to stay in the game. Um you can't make you can't make eight errors in one half of football and expect to be in the contest. It's just never going to happen. You shoot yourself in the foot, and when you play a team like Manly at Brookvale Oval on an afternoon game, and you make eight errors, you're just giving them all the ball and all the chances in the world. You're hurting yourself. Yeah, yeah, and that happened as well. So it did. Now I want to talk about some of the players for the Bulldogs that I thought stood out. Um, Look, I thought Kiraz did some good things for the Dogs on the wing. I thought Hayes Perrin was somewhat decent. Probably needs to get more involved, though, for my liking. Um, Matt Burton today was pretty poor. He was doing too much. You, yeah. could, oh, you could obviously see he was overplaying his hand. Flanagan was quiet. Reid Marnie, very good for the Dogs, I thought. I'm not sure what your take on Reid Marnie was. Lorenzo, but I thought he was good. Yeah, I, I thought for me he carried the team. To be honest, like I, I thought that yeah. um, he was the only one really giving that hundred extra hundred percent. So yeah, credit to him. Uh, Max King did some good things for the Bulldogs. Uh, obviously, losing Luke Thompson just that's <laughs> that, that stung him badly. Losing Luke Thompson, massive loss there. Viliami Kickout. Okay, 
Kick out was poor today, but what the heck? Kick out kicking the ball oh. in the first half. I know it's funny, yeah. and we'll take the piss out of it, and it's funny as hell, but who who on earth allowed that to happen? Why is kick out kicking the ball? Yeah, I mean, when I saw that, I mean, obviously that was funny, but it makes no <laughs> sense because he's a back row, not a, you know, half Mate, they're crazy. It's they weird. are absolutely crazy. Um, Famunu Brown, he's probably the one player I don't want to see play lock ever again, to be yeah, honest. Not a, lock, not a lock at all. Mate, yeah. I questioned it on Tuesday, and I stand by it. Famunu Brown is not a lock. What they should have done is they should have started um, – Corey Waddell in the middle if they were really concerned about a lock or put young Jacob Preston in there. Now, the Bulldogs bench, Franklin Pelle didn't have a great day. He's better than that. Uh, mm -hmm. Waddell was, was pretty average. Jaden Turner didn't do anything great. He, he got destroyed a little bit, Jaden Turner. Bro, Jacob Preston was great for the Bulldogs. Yeah, I, I like this kid, actually. I, I mean, actually, he was one of the few players I thought really stood out, you know. Yeah. So he did one day, but he on to him. I think the three players for the Bulldogs that actually stood out and had a go was the young kid on debut, Jacob Preston, Reed Marnie, and probably Max King. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair enough call, I reckon. Uh, the try scorers for this game, so Manly scored... Um, Tommy Tebow was the first try, and there was tries to Ruben Garrick, and then Cherry Evans got a hat-trick, which was crazy to think. Second half hat-trick, DCE. Yeah. First time in his career he got a hat-trick. And Red Money scored a try for the Bulldogs off a kick off him from himself, which come off the post and he regathered it and scored. Um, lucky try, but take what you can get. Um, all right, Lorenzo, who would you say were the top three players on ground from the Manly Bulldogs game? 3 2 1, with one being your man of the match. Um, I'm going to go number three, Tom Trevojevic. I think Tom was, you know, awesome in his return. And I think. Um, you know, as he gets as he gets a bit more game time, he'll come a lot better. Um, number two, I'll go with Brad Parker. I think the raps he deserves today are definitely worth it. So I'll go with yep. him at number two. Then uh, I think number one's obvious. I'll go with DC as, as the man of the match. Um, unbelievable mm -hmm. performance by him. Yeah, bro. I've got the same as you, but a bit of a different order. I've got number three, Brad Parker. He defended well in the centres. Brad Parker was great. Defended really well. Number two. The return of Tommy Turbo, man of the match, and um, oh, second best player in the field, I should say. And man of the match, the halfback, Daly Cherry Evans, outstanding. He was all class, DCA. Yeah, uh, 100% he was. All right, well, that's the Manly Bulldogs game wrapped up in review. Let's go to the next one. Cowboys over the Raiders. My God. Um, in the first half, we look like a top two team, we, we look like the minor premiers in that first half. In the second half, I don't know what the hell happened. We just completely dropped our guard. We fought we were home. And then Canberra just, I don't know, they found some momentum. They found some confidence and they were all over us in that second half. And oh, thank God for Chad Townsend for that field goal with four minutes to go. Unbelievable. Um, Cowboys 19, Raiders 18. Lorenzo, I know you, you probably missed about half an hour of this game, obviously, because yeah. you're heading back heading back home from Brookie there. But from what you did see of the game, what'd you make of this Cowboys Raiders game? Yeah, like I, I the only sort of um, highlights I saw of the game, like as I was going back home, was just the um, like the post like, from NRL, like of the tries that Cowboys and Raiders scored. Um, but yeah, from what I can see, Townsend's kicking game was really good today because he set up yeah. drink orders tries and. Um, I think um, I, I heard some good things about Name today, Griffin Name. Like I heard, yeah, he was... Griffin Name played great. Ruben Cotter, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought they led from up front really well, but um, look, I, I think I guess maybe they're going to fix the second half shutout. But other than that, it's a good win, I think. Yeah, look, it, it was it was a very ugly win. The second half was quite frankly, it was it was pretty pathetic. The second half, I'll be honest, yeah. it was bad. We led, we led 18 nil. We're all over camera. We looked so good. We let in a try before half time to Emre Gula. And I'm sitting there watching the game. I'm going, all right, we're up 18 6. We've had 69% possession. We've had one error all game. How are we not up more than 18 6? We should have been up, I reckon, 26 6 at half time or, you know, 24 to 4 or something. 18 6 was not good enough for me. 
Yeah, well, I mean, you're leading by that much at half time, and Canberra somehow come back from that um, sort of uh, scoreline from being down, then um, it's, it's, it is a concern. It is a concern. Mate, the difference was um, the difference for me in this. I mean, look, it was a it was a tale of two halves, a tale of two halves. Um, the for me, the, the difference was probably um, the Canberra Raiders bench in the second half. I brought Tom, Tom Starling on, and he just made a huge impact for the Raiders. Yeah, I heard about him. Yeah, yeah, he did. He actually did. Dangerous. Very yeah. dangerous. All right, well, we'll go through the try scores from the game. So uh, Murray Tulangi was the first try scorer in this one. Scott Drinkwater got a double. And then for the Raiders, tries to Emre Gula before half time. One to Tom Starling and one to Jack Whiten. And uh, uh, Chad Townsend field goal in the 75th minute. Yeah, wow. Whatever it was. Unbelievable game of football. Um, as a Cowboys fan, bro, I actually screenshotted some stats um, at half time because I wanted to keep note of this. So, Lorenzo, at half time, the Cowboys had 69% possession. At, at half time there, 60, 60, first half that sixty nine percent possession. Canberra had thirty one percent. The completion rate for the Cowboys was twenty one from twenty three, and Canberra's was nine from 12, 75 percent. Canberra had six errors. Cowboys had one. Full one penalty count in favor of the Cowboys, I believe. Uh, one six again each, and Canberra had seventeen missed tackles. And the and get this right, the um. The Raiders made 81 more tackles than the Cowboys in the first half. Oh, wow. Yet it was only a 12-point game. Yeah, but that's crazy. That's, that, that's actually crazy stats like, to read from because it looked it like is. they were dominating. Yeah. And, bro, look at this. Some more stats here that, that might surprise you. Joseph Tarpany, he had 23 tackles. Reese Robson had 18 in the first half. Tam Malolo had 122 run meters. Um, Hollis Michels had 60. and Tulangi and Gula made a line break each. Um, so, like, with them stats, I'm not one to go too much in the stats, but because of how crazy it is, Cowboys should have been up on more than 12. Yeah, well, I mean, the stats, the stats are saying something, so probably should have at that point. It is what it is, like Full credit to Canberra in the second half. They fought the right to the end. They got back in the game. Um, they fixed up their shit in the second half, bro. Some of the second half stats, I mean, Canberra en ended up completing at 77% completions, 28 from 36, so they, they fixed up their errors. The Cowboys had an 87% completion rate with 36 from 41. Um, Cowboys had 54% possession throughout the game. They had more than Canberra. Um, penalty count was 6-5 Cowboys. Reese Robson had 49 tackles tonight. Jesus Christ. Nice. Tuffany had 39. Ruben Cotter. 216 running meters. He was outstanding, Ruben Cotter. That's uh, Sebastian Chris had 168. Um, I want to mention this, bro, before we go into some of the players. Did you see in the first half the shoulder charge from Jordan Rapana on Scott Drinkwater? How was that not a sin bin? I, I, how was it not a penalty? Is Rapana in trouble by the NRL judiciary, you reckon? He should be because that that's a that's a dead set shoulder charge. Because when, when I saw like that on a highlight like real, um, yeah, that I, I thought that would be a sim bin. I, I obviously I didn't know what the penalty or uh, sim bin was was going to happen at that point. But I, yeah, for sure he'll be in trouble. Yeah, I think you'll be looking at a week on the sideline, maybe two for that. I mean, look, um, Rappin's history at the NRL judiciary is not great. We all know that, but um. That was that was a low wax from Rapana. There's just there's no need for it. It's it's just uncalled for. Yeah, uh, and Rapana it doesn't surprise me actually because he does stuff like this, unfortunately. Yeah, really disappointing uh, from Jordan Rapana. Overall, this game was quite good. Lots of um, oh, I mean, look, the Cowboys were obviously obviously like we'll take the win. I'm happy we won the game. We'll take it and we'll move on to the Broncos next week. I'll be there. I can't wait to be there next week. Broncos and Cowboys going to be a belter. But um, Cowboys have got a few things to fix up, I reckon. Yeah. I think, like I said, 
uh, the second half shutout probably needs to be addressed a bit more. And yeah. probably just, um, yeah, because Broncos, after last night, it should be a game this one, like next week. I th- I'll give you an interesting stat, Lorenzo. You might not be aware of this. Yep, all right. Let's hear Broncos it. last night beat Penrith by one. They didn't score a try in the second half. Cowboys beat the Raiders by one. The Cowboys did not score a try in the second half. So both sides have got to fix up their, their attack in the second half. Both sides didn't score in the second half in round one of the NRL. So it makes for a very interesting derby next week. Yeah. Well, if anything, like the, the history between these two sides should, um, you know, I guess indicate this one will go against the wire too. I don't know what the odds are going to be, but let me just say, after the Broncos win against Penrith and the Cowboys win against Canberra, I reckon it should be a dollar ninety each next week. Broncos Cowboys should be even money. It, it would sound about right, wouldn't it? I don't think Brisbane should be favourites just because they beat Penrith. I don't think Cowboys should be favourites just because they beat Canberra. I think it should be a dollar ninety each, to be honest. Yeah, oh, that's fair enough. I reckon. All right, but before we wrap it up here, we'll just go through some of the standout plays. I won't go through them all. The ones who I thought stood out for the Cowboys are Scott Drinkwater. Absolutely outstanding from Drinkwater. He had a blinder of a game. Um, Tulungi and Val Holmes were terrific. Dearden was outstanding. Townsend was outstanding. Um, Ruben Cotter, unbelievable performance from him. Um, I'll give a... I'll give a wrap to McLean. I thought McLean was also quite good. Tam Lolo at his usual best. Nanai was quiet as hell. Um, he had a very quiet game, Nanai. He didn't do a whole lot at all, surprisingly. Uh, and the bench, the only player for the bench I'll give a wrap to is probably Griffin Name. But I've got to say, Tamo played 11 minutes and ran for 50, 50 metres. But that's that, that's a real surprise, actually. That's pretty good, good for a 10 minute stint, 50 meters. Mm, yeah, it is. It is. And for the Raiders, who stood out for them? Um, I thought Harley Smith Shields played really well for them. I thought uh, Nick Totrick looked all right. Um, Jack White did some good things for him. J- Jamal Fogarty was very quiet. Joseph Tarpany was just scaring me all game. He only ran for 122 metres. I, f- I thought he, w- he would have ran for more Tarpany. Mm. Um, Hudson Young, very quiet. Harry Naira, very quiet. Tom Starling was absolutely terrifying. And um, Gula and Horsbra were quite good for the green machine. Mm. Who would you top three on ground bay from this one, Lorenzo? Three, two, one, with one being the best. Uh, I'd say number three, I'll go with Ruben Cotter. Like, I think Cotter... Yeah. Um, after his performance deserves a point for me. Number two, I'd say Scott Drinkwater. I think Drinkwater yeah. was awesome for Cowboys. And number one, I think because he won the game and because he basically set up most of the tries, Chad Townsend deserves the recognition for the game he had. Yeah, look, for me, um, I'm going to go number three, Chad Townsend. Um, at halfback, I thought Townsend was great. I'm not going to give Townsend man the match, but I thought he was definitely in the top three players on ground. But number three, I'm giving it to Chad Townsend. Number two, I'm going with Ruben Cotter, man. Ruben Cotter was outstanding. 200 metres. Um, he's just a weapon, Ruben Cotter. 216 metres, Ruben Cotter. And he played, what, 67 minutes. Cotter was outstanding. And my man, the match, I'm going to give it to Scott Drinkwater. Scored two tries tonight and he was involved in everything. Drinkwater is my man of the match. And the Cowboys, gutsy slash ugly. 19-18 win over the Raiders. But, hey, considering how good the Cowboys were last season, if you can win a game in an ugly way, it's definitely a good sign. So I'll take it. 19-18 win for the Cowboys over the Raiders. Now let's go to the final game, Pro Enzo Vids. Um, Cronulla versus South Sydney. Cronulla, without Nico Hines, showed a lot of positive. But they just seen a lot of dumb errors in that game. Some of the completions. Um, are we still on air? Did I just cut out for a moment? Yeah, you're, you're back. You're back. I'm back. All right. We're all good. Bloody internet wants to play up on me. Typical. Um, South Sydney knocked off the Sharks at Shark Park 27 to 18. Now, if, if I'm not mistaken, this is South Sydney's first win 
at Cronulla since like 2014 or something. Yeah, yeah, there's a stat about that actually. Yeah, so long time. So that's first win now in about eight or nine years. So it's been a while. The Rabbitohs, they did well. They went to Shark Park. They beat the Sharks. Nico Hines was out tonight, Lorenzo. Um, I'm not I, I, I'm not sure what you think about this, but I thought Brian Trindle did a pretty good job. Yeah, he did. I, I think for the time he filled in, um, you know, he, he he's proven to be a good backup for whenever, whenever Hines or Moyler are out. I think he's proven to be a good feeling, but I think it's not the same, not the same Sharks team without Hines. So they, they did struggle yeah. about him, but they did they did um, hold their nerve for a bit and still competed. I thought. Yeah, no, you're right. I just re- realized I, I haven't got the fucking score right. I've, I've got to fix that up. But bear with me. Um, Trindle, bro. I thought he did some. Oh, he did some good things, but mm-hmm. I don't know. He's not Nico Hines. No, he's not. He's not. No. Um, the Rabbitohs, bro. I, I, I want to give a massive rap to Lachlan Ilias. I thought he was the best player on the field by a country mile, by a landslide. Lachlan Ilias was absolutely outstanding, Lorenzo. Oh, yeah, he was. I mean, like, he's try saver on uh, Ronaldo in the first half. That was – Oh, wow. Uh, that was an incredible effort. And then um, just just his try and, and, he, and his game was really just awesome. So it was good to see from Ilias. I'm glad you mentioned that um, that try saver on Ronaldo Molotalo, bro. That was, yeah. um, that was remarkable. See, coaches love – those little effort areas in games. And that was fantastic from Lachlan Ilias. He showed some great signs in the, um, great signs tonight from Lachlan Ilias. He's worked on his defense in the off season and he's only improving. He's a really good young halfback. Yeah, he is. And I rate him. I mean, I guess there's some criticism about his game and stuff, but I look, I think he's getting better over time. He's getting better and better. He really is. Um, so we'll go through the, the try scorers on both sides. So for the Rabbitohs, obviously, Lachlan Ilias was the first try scorer in this game. There were tries to Keon Kalamatangi, Campbell, Campbell Graham got a double, and for Cronulla, tries to Braden Trindle, Sione Katoa, and Teague Wilton. Now, Lorenzo, I need to mention this because this upset me. This really, really upset me, bro. Um, if the NRL app doesn't want to freeze on me. With about 12 minutes to go, I think it was, or 15 minutes to go, the Wade Graham sin bin. Oh. The Wade Graham sin bin, which was in the, what was it, 66 minute. Honestly, if we're going to sin bin players for big shots, we're in trouble because that was pathetic. Yeah, I mean, we've seen so many of this, like these these situations happen as well. Because I think any any time you, know, you make a big shot, and if it was close to the head or something, then it's just deemed as a sim bin, which is not right. The bunker yeah. and the referee freak out every time. Yeah, and I think that's another good reason why the bunker should not get involved with things like that. Now, in my opinion, the Rabbitohs won this game fair and square. They were the better team. They deserved the win. The Sharks were not good enough to that the Sharks were not good enough to win tonight. But I want to say this: the refereeing in the last twenty minutes of this game was absolutely deplorable. It was an absolute disgrace. Um, how about this one? Brighton and the New Willie, excuse me, I got the hiccups. How about this one? This 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 one was an absolute absolute joke. Brighton and the New Willie with a fucking Head clash gets penalized. Oh, that one. South Sydney scored the next set for Campbell Graham. That is a disgrace. A penalty for a fucking head clash. Are you kidding me? Yeah. What is I've, going on? I've never seen anything like that before. I mean, didn't this holler and uh Panukin have a head clash in the first run up and there was no penalty? Exactly. And Totola did not return. Yeah, that, that's a fuck. That's fucked. You know. If we're going to start Sinbin and players for, um, you know, accidental head clashes or 
Someone's gone for a big hit and they clash heads. We're we're in trouble. We're in trouble. Because seriously, the way Graham Sinbin was absolutely F4. There was nothing in it. The Hamlin Ueli penalty for a head clash where he was just going for a big hit to get his side, you know, some momentum and confidence to get back in the contest. It's just so sad. I, um, like I said, South were the better team. They deserved the win. Good luck to them. Sharks were not good enough to win the game. That is a fact. But seriously, penalties for a head clash and a sin bin for a big shot, which it was like r- right here where the ball was, right on the chest. That, that I mean, seriously, what is going on? Yeah, it, like I said, it's the first I've ever seen a um, penalty for a head clash or whatever. I mean, like, it's just, you know, you can't control how that all happens. It just happens in the tackle. Like, you know, well, it's an Lorenzo, lucky for you, I've got a good memory. Remember last year, Rabbitohs played the Cowboys. Cohen has got Simbin for a head clash and we're down 14-10 right. with about five to go, 10 yeah. to go. And South School down the other end and end up winning the game. So it's not the first time a head clash has impacted a game of footy. Um, Cronulla weren't robbed or anything like that. South were better, but it's just – when a player gets sin bin, it's just so hard to come back from it. It changes the whole game, really. It's so hard to come back from it. I um, I don't understand it, bro. The bunker needs to stay out, stay out of it, bro. The referee just lost control. I mean, uh, I just yeah. The bunker I needs think, to go away. The thing is, Lorenzo. You know, we talk about obstruction being a bad problem in the game. Um, lucky for us, there hasn't been any obstruction issues so far this this weekend, but. I think the head clash, Sinbin, is going to be one that may happen soon if they don't sort it out. Yeah, and that becomes a worry, doesn't it? So it, just, it does oh. become a worry. But I want to give a, I want to give I want to give a wrap to the Rabbitohs. Um, they went to Shark Park. They won the game. It was a very tough game of football. Um, Souths did well to win the game. Cronulla were. You know, look, I thought they were right okay without being brilliant. Cronulla, they tried, but look, their completion rate let them down. 25 from 39 completed sets, 64% completion rate. Against a team like South Sydney, it's just, it makes it really tough. South were, 30, they were 30 from 41, 73%. And the error count for Cronulla uh, wouldn't have been pretty. 14 errors from Cronulla. That's, that's, that's too much for their standard any, anyway. That's basically seven errors a half. South made about 13 as well, but, you know, just, just one of those nights. Um, Cameron Murray and Blake Braley had the equal amount of tackles, 51 tackles each. So pretty good from Murray and Braley. Uh, Talakai ran the most minutes for 201. I thought Talakai was pretty quiet, though. And yeah. Campbell, yeah, yeah, Campbell Graham, 195 metres as well. well. That's all right, then. Um, the Sharkies, bro. They've got um, they've got Parramatta next week um, at Combank. Nico Hines still in doubt. Can they win next week without Nico? Uh, it'd be tough because I think Eels w- would like to bounce back at Combank, but I think they can. Like I, I think if they compete, they can. They're a chance, I reckon. And the Rabbitohs. I mean, big game next Thursday night. Rabbitohs take on Penrith out at Penrith Stadium. That'll be a really big game. Um, bit of an injury cloud around Latrell Mitchell's ankle, but I think he'll be fine. Yeah, well, hopefully he's uh, fit because I, I don't think he can afford another injury. They need Latrell next week to beat them. And, um, yeah, it was one of those games. All right, let's talk about some of the uh, standout players, bro, and then we'll give our 3-2-1. Uh, we'll start with the Bunnies. What would you make of Latrell Mitchell at fullback tonight? Look, it wasn't that bad. Like, I think he... He probably didn't have, like, this explosive type game that he usually does have here and there, but I still think he did yeah. enough to, like, keep himself in the game. But, you know, he's – look, obviously he's going to get even better when he gets a bit more um, bit more games ahead. So, yeah, he did fine, I thought. Yep. Um, Campbell Graham, I thought he was outstanding, bro. Campbell Graham, yeah, he was. He got a double and he actually was good in the centres, I thought. Yep. C- Cody Walker was – was all right tonight. Lachlan Ilias, obviously outstanding. 
Damien Cook was a, was a nightmare, wasn't he? All night. Cook was outstanding too. Yeah, I like him Cooks on because he's a great player. Yeah. Um, Keon Kalamatungi. Fuck, he was outstanding, wasn't he? Mm, on the edge was scary. Michael Cheek came in the back row, did some great things tonight. Cam Murray was good. You know what? I think the Rabbitohs have been watching my YouTube channel in the off-season, bro. I said this weeks ago when South were talking about their best 17. Put Jai Arrow on the bench. Bring him on into the front row. Play him as a front row off the bench. Put Michael Cheekham on the left edge back row. And I reckon South will be a lot more dangerous. Well, they did that tonight. I'm so yeah. glad they did it. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, they actually they actually did that as well. Oh, that's that's funny. I, was... I think South are watching us. Hashtag shout out to the Rabbitohs. Shout out to the Rabbitohs. Uh, Tom Burgess off the bench. I thought he played really well. Um, Shaq Mitchell did some great things. Joy, Joy Arrow came on and played um, in the middle because uh, Totola was knocked out. Um, and South did lose someone to injury. It might have been Joy Arrow. That's right. He went up the tunnel and got injured. Didn't come back. Yeah, yeah, again. Not good. Not good. And Blake Taff played about eight minutes and ran for nine metres, so not much to go off there. Anyone for the um, Rabbitohs that you, you might be a bit um, disappointed with tonight? I'll be honest. I think Isaac Thompson is a bit of an interesting one because I don't, I don't think he's that bad of a winger, but I think, you know, with all these young players or just other like good players in the backs they do have, as they have like a lot of depth, I do think that with how Thompson played tonight, I don't think his spot's guaranteed going forward. That's just in my opinion. Yeah, I also reckon Alex Johnson. Didn't, what he, he he didn't get the ball. Yeah, for some reason it was a bit quiet. Yeah, he didn't get much ball. Was I had tasks for? He was fairly reasonable. Um, yeah. Latrell Mitchell for me. I thought I thought Latrell was was fine. Doesn't have to be a superstar in round one. He just has to do the job, and that's what he did for the Bunnies tonight in their win over Cronulla. Um, let, let's have a quick discuss about the Sharks. Some of their standout players, bro. Will Kennedy, thought he was great for the Sharks at fullback. Uh, Ramey yeah. did, did some good things. Talakai was good in stats, but it didn't seem like it did much throughout the game. Defensively, Talakai was pretty poor. Yeah, I mean, he made some really bad missed tackles, I thought, like, as well. Yeah. Honestly, Talakai's 200 metres doesn't mean anything to me, considering Campbell Graham scored two tries on him tonight, and Talakai's defence was all over the shot. Yeah, that, that, that there is just ridiculous for him. Matt Moylan... Yeah, he wasn't too bad. Pro pro probably could have done a bit more. Um, Trindle started the game off well, but second half didn't really see a whole lot of him, to be fair. Um, Toby Rudolph and Hamlin Ueli, they were fine. Britton Nakora. Oh, yeah, um, the way the commentators were pronouncing Britton Nakora did not sound right to me. Britton Nakora, yeah. They're, 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 like, they're adding like different sort of ways of saying it, weren't they? It did not sound right. Yeah, I, I didn't like that. It sounded like I don't, I don't even want to say it. It was like Britain, like you know, it yeah. sounded like the N word. To be honest, it sounded like, horrible. Like knee, knee, like yeah, something like that. Yeah, it sounded horrible. It did not sound good. Yeah, that was weird. so I don't know. Hopefully, they can fix that up because. The way they were commentating Britain Akora's name just did not sound right to me. Uh, Teague Wilton, bro. I thought Teague, Teague Wilton played well for the Sharks. Oh, yeah. He, actually, in the back row, he did well. He was solid, I thought. Scored that late try there for the Sharks. Mm, he did. Uh, Dale Fanukin, not bad. Not bad from Fanukin. Um, I thought the Sharks bench did, did some great things. I thought Cameron McGinnis come off the bench, played really well. Um, Oregon Kafusi is that debut for the Sharks. Fairly solid. Um, I think Jack Williams went off injured and Wade Graham, well, the sim, the sim in from Wade Graham was honestly laughable in my opinion. That uh, cool. Laughable. All right. The top three players on ground from the sharks Rabbitohs game, Pro Enzo Vids. 3-2-1 with one being the best. Uh, I'll go number three. Probably, you know, it's a bit of a surprise, but I'll go with Braden Trindle as number three. Like, I, I, I did think he... Wasn't the same as what Hines would do for the Sharks, but I think he actually gave it a go and really attempted yep. to do some good things. So I, I give him a bit of credit. 
Number two, I'll go over the trail. I, I thought the trail still – look, I, I know it wasn't his best and biggest game, but it doesn't have to be. He still had a good game, I thought, and uh, played well when it mattered. Uh, and, my, and my man of the match, I have to go with Damien Cook. Like, I thought Cook was dangerous tonight, so I think he was my best player on ground. Yeah, look, for me, uh, number three, I'll, I'll go with Damien Cook, number three. Fort Cookie was great at dummy half. He was very involved and looked very dangerous with the football in hand. Number two, I'll go with Campbell Graham. Scored two tries. Fort Campbell Graham was outstanding in the centres. Um, had a great game tonight. And my, my man in the match, I'm going to give it to Lachlan Ilias. Fort, he was oh, outstanding. Was. Scored a try. Some of his effort areas were freakish. Defensively, he was outstanding. So Lachlan Ilias is my man of the match in the Rabbitohs. 27 to 18 win over the Cronulla Sutherland Sharks. Well, Pro Enzo Vids, that's going to wrap up the first Saturday football review for round one of the 2023 NRL season. Bro, thanks for coming on. It's been great. Yeah, no, it's all good, bro. It was a good review of um, each game that happened uh, this this till today, I should say, for Super Saturday. Um, yeah, it's great. Super Saturday's back. I absolutely love it. And uh, yeah, good to see our teams get the win as well. Yeah, it's good to have it. It's good to have the footy back, bro. Um, all right, guys. Well, that's going to wrap up the review. I hope you guys enjoyed the Saturday football review. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Pro Enzo Vids. Um, the link to his channel is in the description box down below. Anyway, guys, we're going to get on out of here. And I'll see you guys tomorrow afternoon for the, uh, the Dolphins versus the Roosters live reaction. Anyway, until the next time, guys. Have a fantastic night, and um, we'll see you guys in the next one. Ladies.